My name is Keith Party. I'm an assistant professor in the Faculty of Pharmacy at the University of Toronto. What are synthetic biology, bioengineering, and biomanufacturing, and how do they intersect? Synthetic biology is a, sort of an emerging discipline that sits at the interface between biology and engineering. So we're really trying to bring sort of those engineering principles to biology. And, you know, by basically taking the components of life, so DNA, RNA, and proteins, and assembling them in new ways, we're creating new function. Um, and those are basically tools, and those tools have been used by members of the community to do things like detect, you know, contaminated soil, uh, manufacture drugs, um, make drugs like the COVID vaccine. Um, and, and so there's a lot of sort of applications for, for the tools um, that are coming out of the field. And I think sort of, you know, we're seeing this transition in the field from one of strictly tool building, where they're sort of like, we're learning how to use the tools to application. And so, um, and I think this year, this past year with the COVID outbreak is a great example of where we've seen some of the outcomes of synthetic biology, right? With RNA vaccines and rapid diagnostics being available. Um, so we're sort of starting to see uh, synthetic biology come into mainstream applications. Great, this is a good introduction. So how would you describe the importance of biomanufacturing and bioengineering for Canada's future economy? So, you know, we all know that the Canadian, Canadian economy is really, um, you know, heavily involved already in, in bio, in the bio space with agriculture and forestry. Um, and I think biomanufacturing, so the bringing in of, of engineered biology has an opportunity to really add value to some of these commodities and, and diversify the market, right? So really strengthen what is already a strong position in the global economy, um, And so I think, yeah, I think there's, there's, there's huge opportunities here and, and sort of the trick is now to sort of leapfrog into these more hub technology centered, um, areas of research. And also I think, you know, the, the Canadian research, we're already very strong in a lot of these areas, uh, especially sort of fundamental research areas like biology, chemistry, and engineering. And so it's really about being able to take those fundamentals and apply them into this new sort of space of bioengineering and bio and biomanufacturing. Um, and, you know, hopefully having some sort of sort of roadmap on how to do that at a national level. How do biomanufacturing and bioengineering tie into the health sector and uh, what real life impacts could this have for Canadians, their health, global health uh, in the years to come? It's, it's very intertwined and connected. Um, sort of the direction that, that health is really taking is towards um, a, a category of drugs called biologics. So these are protein-based drugs, um, RNA-based drugs, like we see with the RNA-based vaccines. Um, and so, you know, being able to manufacture those, those drugs and, and in, discover those drugs here in Canada Um, is, you know, hugely important to Canadian health and, and of course, to become sort of a net exporter of these technologies rather than an importer uh, in the years to come. Right. And in terms of some of the impacts on, on Canadians' health that could speak to Canadians that we could understand, that I could understand? Right. Sure. Right. So, um, you know, I think vaccine vaccinations is one for sure that's, that's, that's probably top of mind for most Canadians with um, access to RNA for vaccine, you know, vaccines. Um, but, you know, cancer based drugs are often in this category where antibody directed sort of targeted drugs are an important category here. Um, but I also, you know, in, in terms of diagnostics, um, all of those enzymes that run the PCR based diagnostics that we're now all very familiar with are all coming from biomanufacturing facilities uh, in Canada and abroad. And so do you believe we need some kind of a roadmap or a national strategy for the development of biomanufacturing and, and bioengineering in, in Canada? And if so, what role do you see for groups like Ontario Genomics or Can Design or others you may think of in, in its creation and its implementation? 
Absolutely. Right. I think like right now, um, the field in Canada is very sort of, um, you know, independent researchers out there. Right. And so we'd really benefit from a, a, a federal level strategy for um, a, or a roadmap for biomanufacturing in Canada. Uh, countries like the United States, the UK, Europe, China have all done this um, actually quite a while ago. And their industries are are reaping the benefits because of that. And so to, to sort of ensure that we don't get left behind um, and to ensure that we, you know, reap the economic benefit of these technologies, I think it's really critical. And so as a as sort of an example of, of like, you know, maybe how to frame this in people's minds, we've recently as a country embraced uh, or supported the research around machine learning. And that's really... Um, led to a lot of innovation and research funding in that space. And that will lead to a lot of, you know, new companies. And I think also it's important for national security. And the same goes for biomanufacturing. Um, you know, there is, there's huge opportunity for creating new, new ventures in Canada that can create this. But it's also, you know, critical for our national health security and, and also food security. And I think, you know, um, the initiative that Ontario Genomics and Can Design are taking with creating this type of a roadmap is absolutely critical. And what we need, you know, we need this sort of national level, meta level um, organization to, you know, link up all of the researchers that are out there um, so that we can speak with one voice and, and communicate, uh, you know, sort of the opportunities that are in this area. Uh, to the government and to the public uh, at large. Perhaps an obvious question to a, to an interdisciplinary researcher himself, but why is interdisciplinary research important to our future economy and how can Canada effectively stimulate more of it? I'm going to use another example here, which is computers uh, to sort of as an example, right? So as technologies transition from a state where they're very sophisticated high cost, very specialized technologies to one where they become more commoditized and at low cost and available to sort of everyone. That transition requires basically a reevaluation of the whole um, technology, right? So computers started out in the domain of physics and math and through, you know, uh, Steve Jobs and, and IBM and Microsoft, it really became the domain of material scientists, designers, like a whole sort of slew of, of sort of experts outside of that original core technology expertise. And the same thing needs to happen in biomanufacturing, right? So to get biomanufacturing to a state where we can scale and be economically viable and, and inexpensive and, and make sure there's accessibility globally, we need to take what biologists and molecular biologists are doing Combine that with mechanical engineers, fluidics, uh, you know, all of these other um, sort of companion uh, disciplines to build out the technology so that it becomes globally accessible. Right. And, and I guess it creates some kind of a multiplier effect as well. Absolutely. I mean, uh, our la my lab has now has a, like a, a group of in-house mechanical engineers and And it's not just one plus two, you know, one plus one equals two. It's, it's really, um, it's, it's a synergistic uh, effect for sure that where you can really enhance uh, the core technologies. So one thing we often hear at the futureeconomy.ca across various sectors is that Canada is very good at research and development, uh, you know, developing IP, but commercialization of, of our technologies is often a challenge. Uh, is this true in health as well? And if this is the case, What kind of partnerships, collaborations, or investments do you think are needed? Absolutely, right. It's a challenge to to fund ventures in this space, um, much more so than it would be if we were across the border in the U.S. Um, and I think you know that's really a matter of educating the investment community, right, about about the the potential and the opportunities in biology uh, for 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 ventures. And so I think, you know, in addition to capital, um, that's critical for building these, this sort of commercialization in Canada. Other challenges are infrastructure. Um, biology has a very unique set of requirements for, for especially biomanufacturing 
for scale up, right? The, the infrastructure required is very expensive. And so to take a technology from a research lab to a company uh, takes quite a bit of specialized equipment for scale up. And so we need sort of at a federal level to be able to figure out how to provide that to these startups until they, so they can reach that highly fundable phase uh, in their, in their, in their company. And, and another challenge I think is talent, right? There's a lot of talented researchers in Canada, but we're, you know, we share a border with um, the U S which has, you know, an order of magnitude, more opportunities. And so it can be challenging to, to, to attract the right talent. But I think basically with a, a, an approach where it's, if we build it, they will come, I think is actually true. I think Canada has a lot of advantages and, and actually today I was on the phone with someone who's currently in the States uh, and we're trying to recruit them back to Canada for, for this very reason. So I think there's, there's a lot of challenges, but they're all, um, they're all surmountable. What would you say would be the benefits of more investments, more advances in biomanufacturing, bioengineering for the next pandemic? I think, you know, I think we have some excellent, excellent researchers and facilities like Vito in Saskatchewan, right, for vaccines. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's all a matter, matter of resources, right? So you can work really fast if you have all the resources that you need. And so being able to be responsive to, you know, the next pandemic or the next challenge and doing that domestically, I think just brings, well, I think the peace of mind, right? I think having that capacity domestically brings a lot of peace of mind, but it's also an, uh, an economic opportunity, right? Become, because we could become a supplier to, to others also for these, these technologies. My final question, if you had just 30 seconds to pitch to someone in a position of power to position Canada as a leader in bioengineering and, and biomanufacturing, who would you choose to pitch and what would you uh, urge him, her or even them uh, to do in 30 seconds? Sure. So uh, we'll pick the prime minister because why not? William High, right? <laughs> so I would say that that synthetic biology, bioengineering has the potential to, to meet a lot of the global challenges that we're facing right now uh, in, in, as a society in Canada, but also globally. Um, and so this would include um, the environment, right? So the biomanufacturing is inherently has a low carbon footprint, uses aqueous chemistries, um, and therefore is more environmentally sustainable. It's also, you know, as we've been discussing health and food security, um, the bioeconomy can really can really support that. And finally, I think equity is another important issue that I think, you know, the, we're all, we're all very aware of and, and sensitive to, um, but biology is uniquely positioned in that um, it's a self-replicating technology that really only needs simple inputs like glucose. And so it's inherently inexpensive to manufacture. And so I think, you know, for those reasons, uh, I think positioning Canada as a global leader in biomanufacturing um, makes a lot of sense.